First, from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. And may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. And we're going to hear a little bit more about that in just a moment. So also, we have another passage, and you will surely hear the theme. It comes also from the Hebrew Scriptures of the Old Testament, from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 32 through 37. Likely, if you have ever been in church, a familiar story. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You're only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. A lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock and went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Brothers and sisters, Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our behaviors, our words, our actions, they all truly come from our heart. And when we talk about our heart, What we're really talking about is what it is that we really inside of us truly believe. Ever heard anybody say, well, I did it, but my heart wasn't in it. See, I told you. (laughs) What does that mean? Somebody says to you, well, I did it, but my heart didn't in it. How do you feel? I mean, is it really a good feeling when somebody says, well, I did it, but my heart wasn't in it? If you have a problem with that, let me offer a few examples here. Our wedding was, I just thought you might appreciate these. Our wedding was beautiful. It was so awesome. All of our friends came, but when I think about having to spend the rest of my life with you, you know, (laughs) my heart just really isn't in it. (laughs) Come on, man. How would you feel if someone said that to you? Dr. Chessman gave us our children's sermon today, and so I'll do this one in honor of you. I don't think Kathy is a surgeon, but I'm sure you know some. Anybody ever had to have surgery? Can you imagine talking to your surgeon and them saying to you, yes, I can do the operation on the 18th. But that's normally my golf day. So I'll do it. But I want you to know before we go in, my heart's not really going to be in it. What would you do? All right, I want to think about it the other way. What if your heart really is in it? What does it mean? Man, my heart is really in it. Because this is important stuff. 
There was a lady who ordered flowers from, these are true stories, not, not the surgeon thing, that's not a true story, <laughs> but uh, there was a lady who ordered, ordered flowers, and she said, I would come and get them, but I promised my daughter I, I wouldn't go out, certainly in the midst of this COVID pandemic. The driver brought flowers to the door, knocked on the door, stepped up on the porch. She came to the door, and he put the flowers on the porch, normal process today. But then he said, hold on a second. He came back and put a hot meal and a bag of groceries on the porch. She said, what? What? What, what are you, I don't understand. What are you doing? He said you couldn't go. He said, when we heard at the store that you couldn't go out, we had no idea if you were okay. She tried to pay him for the groceries and the food. He wouldn't take it. Greg was running a paper route back in the day. Ride your bike through the paper. An elderly lady approached him and said, listen, man, um, I need you, if you can, to bring the paper up because I'm not really able to walk like I used to, and so I can't get to the paper. You mind putting it on the porch? He thought to himself, what would, you know, I thought, I was reading this story, I was like, what would you think? Really? I got to get off my bike and go take this paper and put it on the porch. You know what he thought? He thought to himself, how many other people have this problem? How many other people have this issue? So he wrote a note and put it in every single person's mailbox. He had over 100 customers. I offer my services to you. <clears throat> I will drop my paper from now on on your porch. But if you need your lawn cut or raked or any light housework done, I am happy to help you. He got 100 responses, and without charging a dime, he volunteered his services to 100 senior citizens. That's what it means to have your heart in it. What he believed, what these folks who give themselves fully and totally without expectation of compensation is that they believe that there is something worth focusing on and giving their life to. And no matter what it takes, they will do it. Think for a second about Ruth. The backstory on this is that Ruth married one of Naomi's sons. She had two sons. Naomi had two sons and a husband. All three men died. Back in the day, <clears throat> it's just the culture and the way things were. Everything basically depended on the man. Having lost these parts of their life, the people they loved, but also really their ability to make their way in life. Naomi knew her future was bleak. So she said to her daughters-in-law, go, go, go somewhere else. Go find someone else. I love you. You love me. That's great. That's awesome. You have no future with me. Go. I love you. I'm telling you, go. Orpa. The other daughter-in-law said, I love you too, fine, I'm gone. And you heard what Ruth said. Why would she say this? She's condemning herself to a life of poverty and shame. Yeah, I hate it too, I hate that it was that way, but it was the way the world existed at the time. Why would she do this? David and Goliath. Goliath, if you read the scriptures, literally read the scriptures of the early text, it says Goliath was nine feet six inches tall. David likely was about five two, five four. Reality is Goliath was probably between six and seven feet tall. His armor, his armor weighed 250 pounds. Real deal. David wore like this bedsheet thing. Goliath was the 
best of the best of the best from Gath, which was just a thorn in Israel's side. They had been whipping up on Israel. All these army people were just hiding behind these you know, I don't know, sand dunes or whatever. Ah, oh, this guy's scaring us to death. Oh, oh my gosh. And he's like, what you got? Y'all got nothing. And David, this little five foot two, four, five foot four, whatever he is, little cat with nothing on, stands up and goes, who is this cat? And how dare you try to defile my God? I think it's where Arsenio got it through back in the 90s, right? <laughs> Woo! What would motivate them to do Would you do it? Would you do this? I mean, come on now. What would motivate them to do this? What was in their heart? Mother Teresa of Calcutta left the safety of the place, the school that she worked at, she saw a riot in the streets. She saw people starving. She saw kids not being able to receive a basic education while the kids she would, was, was teaching received the best education available. She quit her job. She walked into the streets and with her finger and nothing else called the kids and started drawing in the sand so that they might have some kind of shot at a better life. It's a conscious and intentional recognition Paired with a conscious and intentional action. One more time. A conscious, intentional recognition. Paired with a conscious, intentional action. I feel it inside of me. That I am responsible for your life. Because God took the responsibility and Jesus Christ upon himself for my life. That is the definition of Christianity. That is the call we have to follow God. Everything that I am should be given to show you the example of a God who has given everything for us. It is exactly what Ruth does in a very different set of circumstances but exactly the same way it is exactly what David does and how can they do this were they scared come on man they're human of course they're scared were they worried of course they were but their focus and thought was not simply on themselves it was courage and faith that came from belief that God absolutely would give His heart for them. And they trusted that. And were so able to give their heart everybody else in the name of God confirmands this is the path to which you have been called 
and you have responded with the guidance and leadership of those who have taken you under their wing and into their life, who have given their time, your family, your church, your teachers, and said, I will give everything for you. They have set the example of God for you, and you have responded in that example by now saying, I will give my life and my heart to this good God and this great purpose. In so doing, you have set the example for all of us. God has called you to follow, and you have taken the step. All of us now are called to follow you as you have followed those who set the example for you and profess here today and every day in our life and our actions that our heart is for God. I will finish with something I found that I thought might be appropriate for today. Should idea, endeavor, and action all fail, and fear and doubt seem sure to prevail, when reason its path I cannot impart, still there remains always my heart. That something within me I cannot explain, that purest essence of courage to remain, that spur and spring and move me to start, to stand for the good and right. This is my heart. This is my faith, purpose, marrow, and core, to have and give and be even more allied to this spirit and never depart from this passion, this love, this God, my heart. In God's gift of courage, bravery, compassion, and the selflessness that calls us to give ourselves to God and each other, that we know in Ruth, in David, in Mother Teresa, in our confirmands, and in Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us know that we are all called this day to live our life always and forever with our heart in it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever.